On March 3rd, 1882, Charles Ponzi was born in Parma, Italy. He emigrated to the US 21 years later and arrived with only $2.50 in his pocket, having gambled away his life savings on the voyage. Ponzi rose to fame in early 1920s Boston, where he told investors he could double their money in 90 days. How? Something called international reply coupons. These could be bought for cheap in Europe and sold at a high price in the US. And people were in. At its peak, Ponzi was taking in $1 million a day. However, a newspaper article pointing out that there weren't enough international reply coupons in the world to supply Ponzi's scheme brought everything to a halt. It transpired that Ponzi hadn't bought international reply coupons at all, but had been paying off early investors with the money he got from later investors. In the end, he cost his investors $250 million in today's money and was later jailed and deported for his Ponzi scheme. We all love to get quick returns on our investments, but undoubtedly one of the best pieces of advice in financial investing is to play the long game. With little to no effort, it's possible to get returns of 4,000% in 40 years. So if you are young, get started now. Play the long game. But did you know this strategy also applies spiritually? Playing the long game is an important investment strategy in our spiritual life, as well as our financial life, as we will see today. My name is Ellis, and I'm one of the pastors here. Over the last few weeks, we've been studying the book of Daniel. Daniel was written 2,500 years ago in a culture that honestly wasn't very different to our own. Daniel was a follower of God living in a country named Babylon, and Babylon was antagonistic to his faith. And yet, Daniel rose to become one of the most prominent leaders in that country. How? Subversive leadership. Daniel led by putting his faith in God's economy, over and above that of his country, often at great personal expense, in order to demonstrate that the way to climb the ladder may not be the way we naturally think. Today we pick up part two of a story that Pastor Mark began last week by sharing how you can speak truth to power. And if you didn't get a chance to watch it, you, you can click the link and go back to get much of the context for today's story. But briefly, the king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, or King Neb for short, had a bad dream and he wanted to know what it meant. So he gathered all the wise men in the kingdom and asked them to tell him what his dream was, or he would pull their limbs from them and bulldoze their house. High stakes. Now no one could tell him his dream, obviously, so the king ordered the deaths of all the wise men. At this point, Daniel stepped in, asked his friends to plead with God to show him the dream, and then in faith made an appointment with the king. Thankfully for Daniel and all the wise men in Babylon who were about to have their limbs pulled from them, before Daniel met with King Neb, God revealed the content of the dream to Daniel. And in the next few minutes, I want to consider three different aspects of the remainder of this story. First, the dream. Second, the interpretation. And third, the application. We'll look at each of them in turn. First, the dream. God revealed the content of King Neb's dream to Daniel. Here's what Daniel said to Neb. Your majesty looked, and there before you stood a large statue, an enormous, dazzling statue, awesome in appearance. The head of the statue was made of pure gold, its, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of baked clay. So in the dream, we find a statue made of four different metals, a head of gold, a chest of silver, belly and thighs of bronze, legs of iron, and following the four metals are feet made of a mixture of iron and clay. Here's a picture of it. In fact, I got this from a website where you can buy a 3D printed model of it. Not that I'd recommend it, as we'll see next. So we have this four metal statue, but, but listen to what happens following that. While you were watching, a rock was cut out but not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold 
were all broken to pieces and became like chaff on a threshing floor in the summer. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace. But the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the whole earth. So along came a rock, not one made by humans, and smashed the statue to pieces that were blown away by the wind. Ultimately, the rock went on to become a huge mountain and fill the whole earth. And so we have the dream, a four metal statue destroyed by a rock that ultimately became a mountain. But what does it mean? Well, that brings us to the second aspect of today's story, the interpretation. Last week, Pastor Mark shared a dream about himself rescuing a friend of his from severe sickness by transporting him to hospital in a giant camel, like a camel so big it was stomping on cars as it went. We think it looked a little something like this. And this week, I believe I can bring you the interpretation of that dream. I asked our staff team here what they believe the dream meant, and I got some serious responses and, and some not so serious. But my favorite was that the cars represented COVID, and Pastor Mark was so angry with it preventing him from visiting people in the hospital that he decided to get a grumpy camel and stomp all over it. Of course, we don't know if that's the correct interpretation, but King Neb's dream of a statue and a rock had an interpretation that predicted the next thousand years of human history, as Daniel went on to share with the king. Your majesty, you are the king of kings. The God of heaven has given you dominion and power and might and glory. In your hands, he's placed all mankind and the beasts of the field and the birds in the sky. Wherever they live, he has made you ruler over them all. But you are that head of gold. Way to start by buttering up the king, Daniel. And listen to what he says next. After you, another kingdom will arise, inferior to yours. Next, a third kingdom, one of bronze, will rule over the whole earth. Finally, there will be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron, for iron breaks and smashes everything. And as iron breaks things to pieces, so it will crush and break all the others. Daniel shares with the king that each of the four metals represent four successive empires. In fact, we now know which four empires they were. Gold, the Babylonian Empire. Silver, the Medo-Persian Empire. Bronze, the Greek Empire. And finally, iron, the Roman Empire. Quite incredibly, Nebuchadnezzar's dream predicted the succession of world powers over the next 1,000 years. Now, something to note about this progression is, is the changing nature of the metals through the four kingdoms. Over time, the metals became stronger, but also less valuable. Many believe this is representative of the nature of the kingdoms themselves. That with each successive kingdom, they became stronger in, in might, but weaker in values and morals. Ultimately, earthly kingdoms do not tend to go from glory to glory but descend downwards into greater and greater anarchy despite their increasing strength and perhaps this is a lesson worth bearing in mind when we consider the state of our nation today we're stronger in might and power and technology than ever before but our values and morals have disintegrated completely human-made kingdoms do not tend to go from glory to glory. And while this is noteworthy, I think the main point of the passage is in what comes next. In the dream, the, the statue containing these four kingdoms was destroyed by a rock. Listen to how Daniel reveals the interpretation of the rock. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. The rock represents God's kingdom, inaugurated when Jesus came to earth, preaching that the kingdom of God was at hand. With the coming of Jesus and his death and resurrection, he landed the decisive blow on the kingdoms of this earth. And one day, Jesus will come again to consummate his kingdom and, and destroy the kingdoms of this world. 
Ultimately, as in the dream, these kingdoms will all be blown away like chaff in the wind. And the rock, God's kingdom, will grow into a huge mountain that will fill the whole earth. Ultimately, the end of history will result in the demolition of all earthly kingdoms. And only one kingdom will remain, the kingdom of God. So first, we have the dream of a statue being demolished by a rock which goes on to become a mountain. Second, we have the interpretation that all earthly kingdoms will perish and only God's kingdom will remain. Finally, we come to the application. What does this mean for us today? Well, I believe there is an application for our country and an application for us, its citizens. First, let's talk about our country. The US is not named as, as one of the four kingdoms in the statue, but I believe that the US and every other state and nation and kingdom of this earth is represented in this dream by those four kingdoms. That is to say that, that these four kingdoms are not the only four kingdoms that will be destroyed by the kingdom of God, but that they are representative of all kingdoms and all nations. Every nation, country, state and kingdom of this earth is temporary. At some point they will fall, whether it be to another kingdom or whether it be when God's kingdom, represented by the mountain in the dream, takes over the whole earth when Jesus comes again. And this means that the US will not last forever. It is a great nation, but it is not an immortal nation. One day, everything about this nation will fade away, just as it did with Babylon and Persia and Greece and Rome, because ultimately, there will only be one kingdom that rules and reigns, and that is the kingdom of God. So when we look at the ruins of the Colosseum in Rome or the Parthenon in Athens, we get a picture of what the fate of our country will ultimately look like. You know, at one point, the sun never set on the British Empire, but today, it's a remnant of what it once was. In the same way, the US will become a remnant of what it once was. Now, I know this might be unsettling to think that something in which we, we might take great pride and admiration, something for which we might have sacrificed our time and treasures, something for which friends and family members of ours might have given their life, to, to think that it will one day be gone is unsettling, and intentionally so. This is meant to unsettle us, because it is meant to direct us away from investing so heavily in our nation and towards investing in the kingdom of God. And this leads me to the second application. What does this mean for us? Play the long game. Any investment we make in this world is a short-term investment. Yes, if you are 20 and you invest in a good mutual fund, you, you may well still be living off the proceeds 70 years from now. But 70 years is short-term in God's timescale. God's timescale is much longer. Imagine that this pathway represents the history of the world. At some point, and we can argue about when, God created the world that we live in. And at a point after that, he created human beings. And now fast forward several thousand years, and we get to that glorious year of 1776, when the American colonies overthrew their tyrannical British oppressors. No hard feelings. Now take another 200, 250 years and, and we get to the point where you were born. And, and if you do well, you, you'll last 100 years, which is the, the length of this blue piece here. Now, if, if the US is better than the Roman Empire, it might last 500 years, which would take us forward to about 2276. And now if we look at your lifetime and, and the lifetime of the US in comparison to the history of humanity, you, you might say, well, that is worthy of, of investing of myself into. And yet the reality is that God's kingdom, the kingdom that's going to overthrow all of the kingdoms of this earth, is an eternal kingdom. It is a kingdom that is going to go on and on and on. And if we look at our life 
in comparison to God's kingdom, we get a very different perspective. And that is what I mean when I say play the long game. When I say play the long game, this is what I have in mind. The length of time in which God's kingdom is going to reign is immeasurably greater than that of any other kingdom. So play the long game. Don't invest your whole life in this nation or, or any other earthly kingdom. Invest in God's kingdom. And what might that look like? What might it look like to play the long game and invest in God's kingdom? Well, the most valuable thing we have is time because we only have a finite amount of it. So ask yourself this, how much time am I investing in God's kingdom? And how much am I investing in the kingdoms of this earth? According to studies, the average person scrolls through social media for 144 minutes a day. That's over two hours every single day. And that's just the average person, which means that half of us do it more than that. Maybe for you it isn't social media. Maybe it's the news app or the news channel, or maybe it's Netflix or some other TV. I don't know what it is, but I want to ask you, at the end of your life, is that where you are going to want to have invested 15% of your waking hours? What instead if you invested that time with the long game in mind? What if you invested it in things that will have an eternal return on that investment? Our mission at Chapel Hill is to exalt Jesus, elevate others, and launch disciple makers. And that could be a great place to start. How can you invest in exalting Jesus in your life? Spending time in, in worship, prayer, reading the Bible, what about elevating others? That's demonstrating love towards them so that they know they are more important than you. And how about launching disciple makers? Parenting your, your kids and grandkids or sharing faith with your friends and family so they spend their lives making followers of Jesus. This week, I want to invite you to play the long game, to consider where it is you are investing your time and in light of the temporary nature of our lives and the life of this nation, where you could be investing your time in exalting Jesus, elevating others, and launching disciple makers. And if you feel overwhelmed with your time right now and you feel like you don't have any, I'd encourage you to check out the blog I posted yesterday called Five Ways to Create More Time. You can find a link below. Play the long game. Invest your life in God's kingdom and reap eternal rewards. Would you pray with me? Father, I pray that you would help each one of us to look at our lives in light of eternity. Help us to assess where it is that we are spending our time and where it is that we might get a greater and eternal return on that investment. Would your spirit guide us and lead us so that we may know how you are asking us to change, to follow you more closely. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. And if you love these videos, feel free to check out all the links in the description down below. And also, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.